Welcome to Deb's Artsy Life. This afternoon I want to show you how I make this granny square. Um, I have been asked to make a granny square, do a tutorial, so let's just do this this afternoon. Um, I don't know where I got this pattern, but it's a very classic, simple pattern and you see it looks like a flower inside here so basically this is just 12 double crochet and then two double crochet in each in between each one and then three double crochet in between each cluster and then you square it off okay so let's get some yarn and we'll just do this Let's start out with a yellow center. And we're going to change colors on each round. So of course the first thing is to make a slip knot. And you can do that however you wish. There are videos on YouTube on how to make a slip knot. Um, but what I like to do is just chain three. So you've got your slip knot. And I'm just going to chain one, two, three. So there's my three chains. Now into this first chain is where I'm going to work my first double crochet. So a double crochet is yarn over. Insert your hook into this first little chain. Pull up a loop yarn over two, I mean yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's one double crochet. And then I'm just going to do 11, I'm going to do 11 total double crochets in this first little chain two of the chain three that we first did. This is going to count as a double crochet. So here's one double crochet, two double crochet, I'm going to do nine more. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now that's a total of 11 double crochets and you can count them. One, count the little V's. See how that forms a little V? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, you see how that's the last little V, and then you've got these two chains that we started out with. So you don't want to, what you want to uh, slip stitch into is this V. Go under both legs of that V and do a slip stitch. Make sure you get your tail out of the way. Okay, so slip stitch, and then I'm going to change colors. So. I'm going to chain one, two, and pull my yarn through like that, about that length, and then I'm going to snip it off, pull it out, and then I'm going to just cinch this down. And what that does is it makes a nice knot that secures that round, and then I'm going to pull this tail a little bit. To close that up and then of course you can um, weave in your ends but I'm going to do that later so we'll put the yellow aside and bear with me just a minute I didn't prepare very well for this I'm gonna grab another color I 
I'm going to go with a purple. This kind of looks blue on camera, but it's a really dark bluish purple. Okay. So, let me do that again. I wasn't... So, I'm going to insert my hook in between these stitches. See that? And I'm going to pull the yarn through. And then, to, to secure this, I'm going to not do it just once, but I'm going to do it twice. Alright, so let's do that again. I'm going to act like I'm tying it, but I'm going to go one, two times around the yarn and then cinch it. And that gives you a more secure um, tie on there. Okay? Then we're going to chain one, two, and do a double crochet. And of course, these are U.S. terms. Yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook in between each one of these double crochets from the previous round. So insert hook, draw up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and that's a double crochet. And so we're going to do two double crochets in between each one of these double crochets from the previous round. Now if you don't know how to work a double crochet, you might want to practice that. You need to go and find a video just on that on YouTube, and there are many, I'm sure. But yarn over, insert your hook in between, pull up a loop, go through two, go through two. And we're going to do two of those in between each of the double crochets. And that first chain two that we did to begin the round counts as a double crochet. And I'll show you how to join that. Insert hook, pull up a loop, go through two loops, go through two loops, insert hook, pull up a loop, go through two loops, go through two loops. Okay, no chains in between these. Just because I like my granny squares to be kind of close. I don't like big holes in them. So in between each of the double crochets from the previous round, we're going to work two double crochets, okay? And I'm just going to keep going. And I do yarn over kind of funny, I know. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. But it just works for me. There's no right or wrong way, I don't think, to hold your hook and to, to crochet. As long as you're getting the job done and getting the results, the correct result, the method is not so important. Everybody, I, I've never seen two people that crochet exactly the same. So everybody holds their yarn differently, and everybody yarns over differently. Some people even yarn under, and it's okay. So we're we're just going to go with this. All right, so I've got 12 sets of two double crochets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So... Do you see they're between each of the double crochets of the previous round? And it kind of makes a little starburst shape. Now, to join this, here's your two chains you started with. One, two. We don't want to mess with those. But we want to slip stitch into that first V. And that will just give you... You see how it kind of looks like a double crochet when you... It forms that little V. That's just a really good way, I think, to join. And then I'm going to chain one, two, and then pull that yarn through and leave a little tail, snip it off, pull it out, and cinch it down. And it forms a secure bind off. And you know what? I was going to do both those rounds 
in purple. And what did I do? I forgot and cast off my yarn. Oh well. Let's do it in red. Oh, I can't do it in red. Sorry. I've got my red attached to something else. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cast on the very same yarn. I'm just going to tie on. I don't know why I'm saying cast on. I've been knitting. So insert your hook in between. And, and you don't want to do it like right up against where you tied off. You want to maybe go to the other side so that your ends won't be sewn in right together. And then just pull your yarn through and do that. You know what? Let's let's use this color. I don't want it all to be purple. Okay, we'll just change every round. I'm sorry, guys. You get to see me do this again. So insert your yarn in between two a set of two double crochets and do this once and twice cinch it okay so as far as color goes this is pretty much um just your decision but i like my colors to kind of coordinate and if i had this to do over and i did it right i would make the whole flower maybe purple and then maybe use this as the border but anyway chain up two now this time we're going to do three double crochets in between each set of the two double crochets. So chain up two, that counts as the first double crochet. And then do one double crochet and another double crochet for a total of three. No chains in between. Go straight into the next space between the two double crochets from the previous round and do three double crochets. I have to say I do love this color. Okay, I don't know what we can talk about while we do this, but um, you see what I'm doing. I'm just working three double crochets in each space between the sets of two double crochet from the previous round. So, one, two, three. I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling spring <laughs> coming, and I'm loving it. I'm looking so forward to it, and these colors are very spring-like. Um, today is March the 3rd here in my world Sunday and I have so many things that I want to do and work on and only so much time so anyway I was working on my big rainbow granny square that I showed you in the last video I decided well let's just pop on and do a granny square tutorial and I know there's a million granny square tutorials on YouTube but if you choose to watch this one that'd be great because everybody does things differently and you know whatever I do I have picked up from YouTube or Instagram I mean there's nothing really original here I've just picked up tips from different uh, crocheters different YouTube content creators, different Instagram accounts, and combined it into my way of doing these granny squares. And I have made several things using this pattern. Blankets and bags. Lots of blankets, lots of bags. You can make so many things with just a simple granny square. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my three double crochet clusters, okay? There's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you want to make sure of that after each round. Um, now, 
here's my two chains. They're kind of hard to see, but the first V right there is very easy to see. Do you see that? There's only two because this is the chain two. So I'm going to go in underneath these V's, <coughs> excuse me, and do a slip stitch. And that, and then I'm going to chain two, pull through like that, leave a tail, clip the yarn, pull it out, cinch it down. And I'm noticing on my phone, this looks like a really bright blue, but it's actually aqua. So I don't know what the deal with that is, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color you use, as long as you like it, okay? Now, let me see. I think I'm going to do a blue. Um, this, this one I'm going to do in blue. This will be the one that squares it off, okay? Now, obviously, you could just keep going round and round and make this a circle. And I did a video recently on how to make that circle lay flat just by feeling. And so we're not going to go there. But this one we're going to square off. Okay. And it will look like there is a flower in the center of that. And this yarn is a disastrous mess. So hold on a minute. Let me see if I can. This is I love this yarn. Um. Doesn't really matter what yarn you use, as long as you like the color. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so again, you're going to go maybe opposite of where you tied off last time, and you're going to go in between the two clusters of three, and you're going to wrap it once and twice cinch it down and you're ready to go all right so chain two one double crochet two double crochet okay now on this one let's look at this again what this is is two groups of three double crochet in in the middle here see and then your corners are two groups of three double crochet which is called a granny cluster basically and two chains in between two chains in between now you can do it with one chain but I do usually make my squares with two chains in the corners between those clusters because it gives it a little more square look if you just do one chain it kind of rounds the corners and i don't like that as much so you kind of see you can see the double crochet and you need to become familiar familiar excuse me with what your stitches look like so you see a double crochet and you see what that looks like and then on the top of the stitch is a little V. Okay, so let's do this. So we've got our first group of three double crochets. Now in between, we do our second one. One, two, three. Now we're ready to do a corner. Okay, so in the next one, you do a cluster of three double crochets, which is a granny cluster. That's what that's called. I don't know why it's called granny. All right, now I'm going to chain two in between and do another cluster. One, two, three. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to lay this down for a second and turn the heat off. Good grief, it's hot in here. So you see what I've got so far. I've got my two. I've got basically this part. Okay, be right back. Hold on. All right, so now we're going to work down the other side. Okay, and basically we're doing 
this. Okay, just like that. So we do a cluster, granny cluster of one, two, three double crochets. And then the same thing again. We want two. And then we're ready for a corner. Now the next space is where we want to put our corner. So into that space, we work one granny cluster. We chain two, one, two. Then we work a second cluster of three double crochet. My yarn's getting all messy here. Okay, so I've got two. See that? I've got to put a third. And that will finish off that corner. Okay, I've got to get a sip of water here. That um, had the heater on in the sunroom and the heat has dried my throat out. So now we're coming down the third side. And we want a cl granny cluster of three double crochet. Kind of spread it out so you can see what I've got so far. And then another granny cluster of three double crochet. Two, three. Now we're ready for another corner, you see? We're coming on down, so now we're about right here on this one. So let's do one granny cluster. I'm going to move that. One double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, and then we chain two. One, two. Then another granny cluster of one, two, three double crochets okay now we're ready to go down this side and we're almost to the end of this granny square so one two three double crochets and just remember three double crochets in the same space or stitch is called a granny cluster and that's basically uh, how you make a granny square with those granny clusters. All right, so another granny cluster. One, look what I did. I got the tail in there. I don't know if you can see that, but you do have to be careful not to get your tails in in your work. All right, one, keep your tail out of the way. <laughs> that sounds funny. Two, three. Now look at this, we are at the end. All we have to do is one corner and we'll be done. So one, two, three, that's our first granny cluster. One, two chains, and another in the same space. One double crochet, two double crochet, three, whoops, three double crochets. Now, we're ready to slip stitch. So there's the chain two that we started with. And this is that first V stitch. Okay, we're gonna go under that and make a slip stitch. Then we're gonna chain one, two, pull it through about that long, about four inches. Clip it, pull our yarn, and then cinch it. Now look at that. You've just made a granny square. Now, of course, the next step most people hate. <laughs> I don't mind it so much because to me it's just part of it. It's the finishing touch, and it's therapeutic because you're finishing of course, I must mind it a little bit because I've had this granny square for some time. And as you can see, the 
ends are not woven in. All right, let me get my little tool here and I will be right back. pair of scissors and look at this you can buy these little magnets I think there's fuzz on that one and I just put that magnet on my scissors and it holds my yarn needle now there are stronger ones this one's not very strong but it works pretty good so what you need is a yarn needle which is kind of a blunt it's a little bit sharp but not not sharp enough to stick you and so we're going to start with the middle one. Doesn't really matter, but that's the one I'm going to start with. I'm going to cinch it up again just to make sure that it's good and tight. And what I do is I kind of moisten my finger, roll it like that so the yarn, you know, kind of gets flat enough to put in there. And that's how I thread my yarn needle. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to split this first strand of yarn you see that i'm gonna insert my needle and just go up under those loops of that double crochet of all those double crochets pull it through then i'm gonna go back through and i'm gonna split that yarn again split the strand that's the second time and then i'm gonna do it again and you have to kind of start in a different spot each time three times and look at that my end is woven now snip it off and now there's my center and get that cinched up very well but that's okay now this is the next one we're going to do so i'm going to moisten my finger twirl it so it's kind of small enough to go through here Thread my needle. And now you want to make sure that you're weaving your ends into the same color so they don't show. So I'm going to go up underneath here, underneath this uh, purple, and I'm going to stick my hook, not my hook, my yarn needle, in under these. Now notice there's nothing showing from the front. You don't want it to, you know, go through the front, just through the back of the work. Okay, so that's the first time. You want to do it three, going back and forth three times. Now I'm going to go in in a different spot, kind of under here. That'll be the second time. And you don't have to pick up much. You just, now here I'm going to split the stitch. And the reason you split the, the, I don't mean split the stitch, split the yarn strand. See that? How I'm inserting my hook through the middle of that yarn strand. I hope you can see that. You do that because it helps the fibers kind of mesh together. And if you'll remember, I told you everything I learned, I learned from YouTube. Um, I do read some, so some is from books, but most is from YouTube. So anyway, there you have it. That ends sewn. Snip it off. And now we'll keep going. So here's the purple. Oh, there again, we're going to spin it so it'll shrink up and we can get it in our needle. Now, if you've got a chunkier yarn, there are bigger plastic yarn needles. So I'm just going to go under here and <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go under here, but then I'm going to, do you see how my needle's coming up? And I'm going to go under this one too, and I'm going to make sure that I come out inside that purple. See that? Now notice there's nothing showing on the front. All right, so I'm going to do that. That's one. And then I'm going to stick my needle right here inside this strand and go out there. 
that's two. Then I'm going to insert my hook down here and pierce that strand of yarn and go back through. And that's three and I'm done. And I'm going to chop it off. Be very careful not to chop anything but that tail. Now I'm going to show you how to do this one. We only have four more to go. But if you can weave in your ends correctly and securely, that is a big part of the battle. All right, so it's coming out right there, as you can see, the knot. Woohoo! Where is it? Right there. So I'm going to stick my yarn under like that. Nothing showing on the front. That's one. Now I'm going to separate this strand right here. Two. And I'm going to kind of stick it underneath that knot. Make sure nothing's showing on the front. You can see the yarn needle through the spaces, but that's okay. And that's three. All right, do it again. We got four more. All right, so here we go, threading the needle. I'm going to do this a little bit faster. Run it through. Now, look, I don't want to run it through because see the color? I don't want it to show. So I'm going to split this piece of yarn, the blue, the dark blue one. Okay. Then I'm going to kind of come up in here and pierce that strand and go through. That's two. And then I'm going to go underneath there and that'll be three. Now you see none of that is showing and that's what you want. If I had come out in this color, you know, that, that would have shown and you don't want that. So now we're ready to do this one. This will be getting us closer to the end. I'm going to kind of go through and split those yarns. Can you see that? And I'm going to come down and go into this corner. Okay. Nothing showing on the front. That is very important because you don't don't want that strand going through. Now I'm going to split this first strand, go up underneath all this corner. Nothing showing on the front. Okay. Now look at that. I've picked up, see that little thread? I think what I'm going to do is just that. It'll be okay. If it was more than one thread, I'd probably have to. Now I'm going to split this. Go through the third time, and that one's weaved in. We just have two more, guys. Some people absolutely hate to weave in ends, and I understand that, but it's just a job that's got to be done, kind of like squeegeeing the shower for us. We have to squeegee our shower whenever we finish it's just part of it i just look at it as part of the ritual so you can it all depends on the way you look at it my thing with granny squares is i love these colors so much and i love using color so much that weaving in the ends does not bother me because the benefit outweighs the aggravation to me but now some people do not feel that way and that's okay that's why there's lots of different ways to do things. Okay. This is the last one, you guys. Now, do you see how that's coming out in the middle of that? I'm going to show you how to not have that show. So, we're going to spin it so it's smaller to thread. Okay. So, we're going to go under this first to come out. And I'm going to split this strand right here. Ooh. Okay. 
See how I've split the strand? And then I'm going to go up under here, over that knot, and I'm going to come out over here and split a strand. See that? That's two. Then I'm going to go back in, and this will be three, and I'm splitting a strand again, I think, kind of by accident. That's it. Look at that. That's the back side. It's important to be able to recognize the back side. You know, it doesn't look as good as the front side. So that's it, guys. That's how I make that granny square. Now, I want to show you something. I showed this in the last... Okay, what I wanted to share is about this yarn. This is Premier Basics in the color primary. Premier Basics Mosaic. I want you to look at all these beautiful colors. But here's the problem. Just like with an Impressionist painting, if you look at that Impressionist painting, for instance, Monet, Van Gogh, Pissarro, um, you can see the individual brush strokes, and it loses the effect that it has if you're looking at it far away. If you look at it across the room, it just makes this beautiful picture, but if you get close to it, it is, you can see those brush strokes, okay? This yarn is kind of the same way. If you look at this yarn far away and you combine it with all these brilliant colors that are separated, it, it, it doesn't look good. And I didn't realize that until I was doing that video. Um, I think it's episode 30. If you haven't watched episode 30, please do that and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But I had bordered this beautiful rainbow granny square in a few rounds of this. And it looked awful when I held it up on camera. And it wasn't until then that I realized it looked awful. And the reason is, if you mix all the colors in your palette together, like if you're painting with watercolor or oil or whatever, even crayons, if you mix all the colors of the rainbow together, you're going to get mud. You're going to get yucky, grayed out color. Okay? And the same thing's happening with this yarn. When you mix all these colors of the rainbow, and they're not separated like here, and you border it, it was just turning gray. So please watch episode 30, and you can see that. And I've decided that I'm going to donate this yarn because of that. Now, I think it does have its place, so I don't know. I may use what I have and just not buy anymore. Because if you use this as the center of a flower, like here, and then you put the yellow here, then that would look good because it would draw out the yellow and make it stand out. So we might could do that, but as far as a border to a rainbow blanket, no. So I wanted to share that because I thought it was very interesting and, and it dawned on me why um, that was happening and why nobody, and including me, liked that as a border. So now I'm, I'm fixing it and I'm just starting my rainbow over. Chuck this, at least for that project. But is that not beautiful? I love this. So this is the same granny square that we just worked on that started out here. This is the, well no, this is a different one actually. I used 16 instead of 12. So forget that. But anyway, it's the same concept. You got your flower. You got one granny square that starts all this and you just keep building on it. We'll maybe do this flower in another tutorial. This is one um, I found on Instagram. Jen Port. It's J-E-N underscore P-O-O-R-T on Instagram. And she has these wonderful patterns on her Instagram account. I'm showing you that on the wrong side. This is the right side of it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. 
and I hope that you got something out of it, and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, if you see something here you like, um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.